everyone. Welcome back to Tom Girl. This is episode 48 today, and I'm so excited for this one. It's about the adventure to Havasu Pai Falls with my fellow adventurer, Chloe West. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Oh. how I felt. Don't wake me now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right. One of the best trips of my life just got back on Sunday. We're going to talk all about Havasu Pai Falls. Hey guys, I'm JJ Jurgens. You can follow me at JJ Jurgens, and I'm with fellow adventurer Chloe West. Thanks for joining me, Chloe. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here and talk about the Havasu Pai trip. Yeah. All right. We got, you got it from two different perspectives because we went at two different times. So we're going to share all about, all about it with you guys and tell you everything that you need to know because we've had so many people ask. How'd you get your permit? What do you do? So we are just going to break it down from the early stages to what you need to know to pack and all of that. So this should be a really fun one. And we have lots of uh, pictures from our trip there, too, so you can get a good idea of what you, what to expect and what you're going to see. And your your mind will be blown. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's so stunning. And I feel like how beautiful our pictures are don't even do it justice yeah. you know that's one thing it's i i don't even remember the first time i saw a picture of the place did you remember when um, you did i i don't but i i had wanted to go to the grand canyon which i've still never been to mm -hmm. And then someone told me about Havasu Pai, and then once they told me about it i was hooked mm -hmm. i I couldn't get it off my mind and it took me two years yep. to be able to get my reservation and finally go but it was worth it and I really want to go again yeah same exact thing with me I think it must have been Instagram I'm guessing is where I probably saw because I know that's where they say a lot of the popularity has come from and viral videos on YouTube and stuff but it's funny as I had it as as my screensaver you know on my phone like forever and I'm like someday and so it was great because I keep seeing that all the time um, but that's I, a but, good goal setting idea it plants in your mind yeah. without it you kind of even knowing it I each like day that. yeah i, I know steal that when i came back i was like and that was a great feeling for me too i was thinking i'm like wow i can actually replace this now like with my own pictures you know but then i'm like okay what picture is going to go there next yeah what's your next adventure yeah. well you know what it's funny because after coming back from this i was reading about the wave and they said that that's the next one that is really really hard to get a permit for too i believe it's in utah or like don't get me if I'm wrong, but um, and it's this whole gorgeous like canyon rock thing that's formation. So if you hashtag the wave on your Instagram, some really pretty photos. I've done up. a Utah road trip. That's what I did the year before when I tr first tried to go to have a soup high and it didn't work. I did um, I did a big road trip through Utah all the way to Colorado and back through Utah mm -hmm. and did Dead Horse Point, did the Arches, did uh, the Big Mittens in Utah. Oh. So that's another that's another Good go. One. But the wave, I have never heard of that. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Well, let's talk about because you said it took you two years, and that's the same amount of time it took me. So tell them a little about your process of how you finally got in. <laughs> well, so the first time I wanted to go, um, I <laughs> just called a month before, thinking a month that's plenty of time for a camping reservation, mm -hmm. um, and finally calling and calling and calling they didn't have an online reservation system yet I finally get through after days of calling and the man is like laughing at me and he's <laughs> like it's April like no and I'm like it's for two people how do you not have a reservation for two people like, during the week <laughs> and he's like absolutely not we're sold out for the rest of the year and I'm like what and then he's like, you'll have to call back next year. And I'm like, when? When do you take reservations? February 1st. In my calendar immediately, mm -hmm. February 1st. Um, finally, the whole next year rolls around. So, and I and now at this point, I've seen that they have online reservation system set up for the first time ever. Um, and I had it in my calendar. I got the alerts. I was ready to go. Um, and yeah, I'm driving to work. 7 a.m. hits, I pull over, <laughs> and I'm on my phone trying to get the reservation. And I wanted to go in, I originally wanted to go in March, at the end of March. And I had it, and I had the reservation. And then when I went to pay, their site crashed. <sighs> and I, by the time I reloaded it and got back on, and wanted that went to buy a date again it wasn't there it was mm -hmm. already taken up so within that short amount of time the march dates i wanted were gone and then i started kind of panicking a little bit 
and then I was looking in the summer and June and those were already taken and then it was either like July like super hot or since it opened February 1st President's Day weekend and since we're in LA and thankfully the guys who I were going to go with I knew that they were already thinking about going camping President's Day weekend so I just booked it without even calling mm -hmm. them um, and that's why we went so early in the year and it's a much colder than when mm -hmm. you went um, and so that's how we finally got it though is just and I was on my phone I was on my computer at that point um, I was trying however I could to just book a reservation yeah very similar for me too I wanted to go two years ago and same thing was I had a friend who uh, I randomly met on a flight to Austin one time we've just been friends ever since we were both on the phone like trying to get in and just nothing nothing and we tried for days too and finally we're just like yeah I don't think we're we're not gonna not gonna get in so a year goes by so then this year same thing get up and that's when he he had found out then that there was online reservations and like we didn't know about it either so this next year we were ready online and both bought our phones so he's in Phoenix. And one thing I want to note if you're in L.A. too, because what I almost messed up was, is it's, it's 8 a.m. Arizona time. So we have that. They mm -hmm. don't have daylight savings time. So I almost was going to be, you know, would have been late. But he's like, oh, yeah, I remember daylight savings. I was like, oh, yes. So anyway, we were both. And then finally, um, he could never, we never got through on the phone. But I finally got through online. So I suggest you guys try uh, online. And I do have those uh, websites. Um, it's just have a Um And then the, the, the calendar shows up but same as you we had dates panned out because there was eight of us going and then they just started like disappearing like every one we wanted to get so I didn't think we were gonna get anyone either so then I had a midweek a Wednesday come up and I'm like I, you have you know see that time ticking down I'm like do you yeah. think people can do it? he's like just book it we'll figure it out because <laughs> I was too afraid to let it go because I'm like well if I let this go and another one doesn't come up so advice for that is you're probably gonna have to take whatever one finally pops up for you and you're getting you know are available to book I would just book it yeah and I think it's important to remember too that it is a Native American reservation so mm -hmm. they the guys working in the office are the th are three people and I'm pretty sure it's they are those are the only Native Americans who work in that yeah. office is those three people, and they just got this internet system up uh, to make reservations. So it's not, it's going, it's gonna crash. The phones yeah. are gonna be booked. Like for the amount of people who are trying to go now and for how popular it is, and they only have so many campsites and mm -hmm. only there is a hotel there, but there's only so many rooms. Um, that, yeah, I think that's important to remember because sure. it's like, <laughs> And it's kind of part of the draw, you know, it's like yeah. a little exclusive, it's hard right. to get. Um, but yeah, that I, that's important to remember because it's just those three people yeah. running that whole system. And I like that because I, I felt like there's a good number of people when we're down there. I didn't feel like completely overcrowded or too many like felt. So I, I like that they're keeping it, you know, to a certain amount of people. And once you see where the village is too, you'll be amazed that there's even internet service like down there. Cause, you know, Absolutely. Like, well, I go there. All right. So let's start talking about um, how how long it took, how you got there the gear process for because you drove from LA so we drove so we were going President's Day weekend um, originally similar to yours we had one night booked so we were gonna hike in camp that day and then hike out the next day um, I messed up booking that uh, because I wasn't I just wasn't thinking about how physically tired we mm -hmm. would be from that um, but we ended up being able to extend which was great but so Friday night, we drove from LA um, and we drove all night. So there were four of us total in our group. Um, we drove in a van together. Those three guys that I went with go, go backpacking and camping together all the time. And they were ready to switch off driving where I <laughs> am, I'm a teacher and I'm a drama teacher. And that Friday night, I happened to have a show so we couldn't oh. even leave LA early because of me. <laughs> so we couldn't leave LA till like 9 p.m. And so I had been up all day working the show. I was exhausted. I went straight to bed. The dudes drove all night. They were amazing. Um, but it was about an eight hour drive. Mm -hmm. um, and driving at night, it is really, you're on old route 66. Once you get through, um, you drive from LA through Vegas, and then you hit, I wanna say it's Kings. Um, 
is the like last big town in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you're just on old Route 66 the whole way until you hit the Native American Reservation Road. And old Route 66 mm -hmm. is just a trucker's road. That's it. And um, I want to, I'm pretty sure it's King's is the, the last big stop. And that's like the last stop for food, the last stop for gas. Um, and that's really where you got to like fuel up and get everything. And we arrived at the starting point of the hike at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And so we just parked. Parking was actually difficult for us. I don't know how it was for you guys. We luckily it wasn't too bad for us at all. It was yeah. hard for us to find parking even that early hmm. um, because you leave your car there. Mm -hmm. So it's everybody who's already there and then everybody who's waiting to get in. Um, so we had to park pretty far away and it was so cold. It was, I did not anticipate how cold it was gonna be that morning. The, you start on top of the cliff and then going you so for us starting on top it was so windy mm -hmm. and that was a it was just rough you know mm -hmm. you like don't sleep well in the in that yeah. car ride um and we just went straight through so we didn't get like a full night's sleep so mm -hmm. it was it was tough getting there but um but i'm glad we did it the way we did it i'm <laughs> the guys miraculously like no complaining just did what yeah. they had to do yeah it's pretty incredible yeah. so for for a lot of people some people go through phoenix is a good way to do it or vegas so from vegas it's about three and a half hours from phoenix it's about four and a half to the trailhead so what our crew did which was a cool way to we had a bunch of people meeting in phoenix so we drove about um two hours to um seligman and we stayed there and it was on the route 66 as well so this, there's a couple of small little hotels there and then like a pizza place and a bar and so we were able to we slept about five hours uh, at a hotel there and then it's about two and a half hours from the trailhead so that was one way if you do want to get a good night's sleep and some food in before because we were gonna sleep in our cars at the trailhead too and just like go right in but our, our leader ended up having up this idea and we're like yeah that, that sounds like a good plan so that's an option if you'd like to do that before you drive into because it was um, but we both said a good thing you have to make sure you get gas in the nearest town outside because it was something we didn't plan on and I didn't, didn't read enough and it was thinking as I was there I was like wow so glad I had just almost enough gas in the car because if you get stranded on that road uh, I think I what was, what was it Indian Route 18 it is a 64 mile road to that to the hilltop so yeah. you, you got to be prepared for that and I think yeah it's Havasu Pai the actual town so the whole town even for the natives who live there they have to hike in yeah. or the helicopter that runs i think two days a week it's the yeah. helicopter barely runs so they either hike in or all the things for that town get helicoptered in and um so there's nothing at the hilltop there's mm -hmm. a porter potty and this station that you check in at if you ha if you're gonna mule your stuff in and that's it mm -hmm. um so yeah so it's about an hour drive to the trailhead on this indian road that has nothing but even before the Indian Road, when you're on Old Route 66, there really isn't much. Mm -mm. And you really have to plan um, gas because you have to think you get gas and then you drive at least an hour on this Indian Road and then you park your car and then you're going to drive mm -hmm. back another hour. So the gas thing can be tricky for mm -hmm. sure because, uh, yeah, you just you don't want to risk it. And um that's that's a planning thing <laughs> that you sure. you want to make sure yeah like there so I remember reading on a blog that said the last gas station was in Truxton but I I don't trust that gas station was so small that I didn't even want to stop there it's really in that mm -hmm. like Kings area that is like the big where they actually have fast food lots of truck stops lots of gas stations um, that's where I would recommend filling mm -hmm. up because. Mm -hmm. The Truxton one, especially if it's like four or five in the morning when you're heading in, it, I don't know if I would trust it. It's mm. that old 66 road is for sure it's, an old truckers road, and it's it's a little hairy. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. There was like a themed hotel next to us too, and we all kind of said like, I mean, I was glad we had a group because I I think if I was solo at that point, I would maybe not have gotten much, you know, much sleep. Yeah, Just a little. For sure. You have to be careful. Um, just to point out real quick, the rates for staying the night, if you do two days and one night, it's $140.56. Three days and two nights is 
12 cents or four days and three nights is 201.67 so clearly it's a little cheaper the more nights you stay and um but i definitely recommend i only got the one night in i wish i would have stayed two, been able to stay two and come out because i think one more so that you do have that day to kind of rest in between and hike to some of our other falls if you'd like to yeah um and what happened to us so because we i planned the way you did just one night and mm-hmm. hike out the next day um when we got into town to check in, I just asked the ladies at um, at the check in station if we could extend a night, mm-hmm. and they were very flexible. Um, and then that's also where I asked um, if we could mule our packs out, <laughs> um, which they also did. So, in case you don't plan correctly, I think probably unless it's super super busy, yeah they're gonna let you extend yeah they let us do that too we actually got through as we were before we were leaving phoenix that's when we realized some of us thought it was two nights and some of us thought the reservation was one night so we uh actually called and got through which i didn't think we'd get through Mm. and they did approve it over the phone too so you can always try that if you want to kind of switch things up and and we also should say the first person that calls in is kind of your lead person so they can book for the rest of your group so your whole group doesn't have to call in you can have one person who then pays for everybody yeah, that's yeah. I I think it would be really impossible to try to do yeah. it any other way. Yeah, <laughs> and they do have a maximum four day like stay, but there's nothing against if you. They say you can book as many of those maximum four days as you want. Good luck getting that. But like they said, if you somehow can get like eight in a row, then back to back, you are able to do that. But, oh wow! And I read that in the site, and I was like, that's probably going to be about impossible. But <laughs> you know, maybe. And, maybe. and they they have bathrooms, but they don't have oh. showers. You yeah. know, like I don't know. <laughs> I, unless it's you're going in the water and that's your shower. Yeah. But yeah, for eight days is a long time to backpack. That's a yeah. lot of food you have to. Prep. That is, yeah, for sure. Well, let's start. We have some pictures, so I think we got a few of them up there. We're going to start just kind of taking you through the through the trail and what you would see as you as you would start. So this first one is this is like us, you know. Um, I think there was there was one on there was one one on top. Is number one photo in there? Or one. That is the number one. I'm sorry. All right. I've selected. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, this is towards the beginning. We're actually down through the first mile after, at this point to where it starts to level out. So the first mile and a half is kind of a lot of switchbacks and steps downs and, like, some cliffs. I think the first mile is a 1,000 feet, a 1,000-foot yeah. drop in switchbacks. Yeah. I think that's how I think steep right. it is. Mm-hmm. I think it's a 1,000-foot drop, switchbacks the whole way. Um, so the hike in, it's about 10 miles to um, – the city, or not the city, to the mm-hmm. town, is what we should really call it, um, to have a Supai village. Um, and then from there, your campgrounds are two miles after that. And the, so it's it's about a 12 mile hike in. However, hiking in, you are going downhill and then it's a slight downgrade most of the way. Mm-hmm. Once you get down that thousand feet, it's pretty flat, I yeah, would say. I think so too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even though, like for me, that was my first backpacking trip, actually carrying a large pack like this size, and um, I was really nervous, but it was doable. I trained. I don't know if you mm-hmm. did. You train at all? I didn't train because I I stay pretty active and I hike a bunch just locally, you know. But I've never really. I, I same as you. I haven't done like a backpacking trip before. But, I trained but, carrying. No. This is so silly. But yeah, so I hiked, but I was so scared about the pack and the weight. And I read uh, Wild, the Cheryl yep. Strayed book. So I'm like, I don't want to be her. Like, <laughs> I need to train. And so I hiked Los Leones, which is like the Santa Monica Trail. Um, mm-hmm. It's about eight miles. And I would carry a five, or not a five gallon, a one gallon thing of water in my pack. And that was like, that was my training. training. But it was good. Um, sadly, my pack was a men's pack, and so it was too mm. big for my body. I couldn't get it tight enough around my hips. Um, so that's, like, the one thing for next time that I need to get my own small pack that fits me. Mm-hmm. Because it was, like, I had to kind of jerry-rig it to make it tighter for me. Yeah. That was uh, – I did read about that before. and So I d- highly recommend going into REI if you've never done a backpacking thing because I finally did that. I, put, I, of course, put off plan, you know, getting my stuff together until the last minute. But I was so glad I went in there because they are so helpful. And he – that was the main thing he said. He's like, you'll be miserable if it's not right. And this is where it's supposed to sit. And they were – and they put um, – they have, like, 20-pound bag weights in there. So they put it in my pack and let me walk around the store 
door. <laughs> and then and then they would adjust me and be like, oh, it's supposed to be this way or mm. feel it. So I highly re recommend doing that if you've never done it before because it was definitely very helpful. And I, you know, there's one back, you know, when you don't know what you're choosing, I like, I liked this one, but then when I put it on and walked around the store, it didn't like fit right on, like on my mm. back. And then when I would try a different one, then I was like, oh, then you can start to see the difference of which one is like designed for you. And especially for women too, because I think they, you know, like different body types and stuff too and if like though getting the right pack will yeah make like you your a lot happier. torso size yeah. they can adjust and not just like how tight they can yeah. really adjust how tall it is and where it can sit so mm -hmm. yeah that's i would recommend that there were certain times coming down that i had to readjust a little bit um yeah. but yeah but then coming in yeah it's it's really beautiful mm -hmm. oh so stunning um then so one of the I think we should yeah there's mules coming down those are the, the, the you can have your packs brought in on those and out if you don't want to if you don't want to carry them and also the mules there awesome. have the right of way yes that's important too because I I think they'll get mad at you uh, they'll definitely yell at you but you do if you they don't want you to hike with headphones because they want you to be able to hear the mules because the mules do not stop. Mm -hmm. So you are supposed to get out of the way of the mules as they are coming down the trail. And they book it. I was I was so amazed by how fast they go, like down and up. I was like, whoo, like, yeah. that's powerful. Yeah, and with so, full packs yeah. on too. I mean, they had coolers, they had all kinds of stuff on them. I was like, yeah. I know, people brought that's in sad. coolers. <laughs> I I, we, we packed our own food in. Yeah. Um, we didn't have coolers, but knowing that you can mule in a cooler is, you know, kind of like changes the way you can really do it if you if you want to do it like that. But we should say there is no campfire campfires yes. allowed. So even if you bring in food on a cooler, you're still cooking everything on a stove. Mm -hmm. um, and so those camp stoves are usually <laughs> this big and usually the size of this microphone, actually. Yeah. So the, there's not much that you can it takes a long time to make mm -hmm. dinner. Yeah, we did the MREs and those, those were great. Mm -hmm. And then you just need to be able to boil water. And um, we had all different flavors of those and I was highly impressed because I never had those before either. And they all was like, these are actually pretty tasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of flavors for yeah. those. Did, yeah. Okay, sounds good. These are, so these are the last two pictures kind of walking in before you get to the village. Um, just it's just stunning. I mean, you just look around you, and the rocks are incredible, and the colors as it changes as the sun comes up in the sky. It's just beautiful. Yeah, and this so is yours. yeah, mm -hmm. and that's us hiking in. So you hike down a thousand feet, and then you're hiking in. You kind of are hiking deeper into this canyon. Is essentially what it is. So you'll see like these amazing red rocks walls as mm -hmm. you just get deeper and deeper, and then you know you're getting to the village when you hit the water. It's like mm -hmm. there's way more trees, and then there's like a little kind of brook, and then that's when you know you're like, you're I'm ready. like a mile away. We're so close. Yep, <laughs> and you get really, really excited. So next up on the pictures is the village. So this is what the village starts uh, looks like. Um, and then there's also a, so then that's where the store is. So there's the store. So in there you can get um, frozen Gatorades, which we're all like frozen Gatorades, but they are genius because they, that's what I had to write as soon as I got out and it was so delicious. But um, chips, pickles, um, like everything. Lots, yeah. yeah. Uh, when I stopped at that store, they also have very famous burritos there, mm, breakfast burritos. Um, so when we, I'm so glad. <laughs> We stopped at that store to get directions to our check-in spot when we first got there. And I'm so glad we did because the man who um, owns the store, his family runs the store and then the breakfast place. Um, we kind of like were chatting with him and friendly. And the day we hiked out, it was pouring rain. And we were making a last minute decision to either like run for the canyon and take shelter in the canyon or I was like, guys, remember, there's that last store. We haven't made it to the store mm -hmm. yet, but that's the last thing. That's like our last chance to hide and stay, like, <laughs> wait out the rain. And we did. We went in there, and it was warm, oh. and they had coffee, and we <laughs> got warm. burritos. And yeah, we like stayed out the rain and bought ponchos there as well. They mm -hmm. had ponchos. I think they even have hand warmers if you go when it's cold. Um, 
Yeah, they have like minimal supplies. Like I think I bought the last poncho. Uh, um, but yeah, like that store saved us on our way out. Yeah, the store is so great because like now I know like I packed the three liter um, uh, water bladder and that was would have been enough. Like I also on the way down had another water and different things. I didn't know how much water I would need to pack. So so I think that's what you can get by with. And then once then until you get to the store and, and refuel and then. Um, yeah, that way try to save yourself because every little weight in that pack matters. Everything matters. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about our packing list later. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that all matters. Yeah. <laughs> so as you keep going, there's where you start to see more water, and you're making your way now after the um, after the village. Is that is, Navajo f- or is yeah? No, wait. Is that a I fall? don't know for sure which one this one was. Kind of looks like Navajo, but I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Not yet. It's part. It's, it's on the way to have us. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. So here is where the first the Havasu Falls. So when you this is the first thing peeking over from the top of the cliff, looking down and and seeing, and you see the people hanging out in the pools there, and it's just. Then you then you round a little bit to the left, and when you go to the left, then you actually see the full waterfall, which should be the next one. Yeah, and what's like, cool too is the village. So you get to the village, and then two miles away, you hit Havasu Falls, which is where the campgrounds are. Mm-hmm. And the campgrounds are, it's great. They they made the campgrounds close to yeah. the, you know, like, namesake falls, which I think is, was so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so we, our campsite was actually pretty close to it. So we kind of got to go there and hang out and spend time, and that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, there there's you mm-hmm. at the top there. Yeah, so that's like right where that other picture was kind of looking yeah. down is you you come from the village and you are actually on top of the falls mm-hmm. and then you hike on down and that's where you saw everybody in the pools and you can see I'm pretty bundled up. It was <laughs> it was it was like 50 degrees most of the time um, when I was there. So I didn't really take off my jacket or hat too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So there's, so there's a side angle of what you see. It's just just amazing. So that's that's the most kind of iconic falls that you see in all the the Instagram shots and um, oh, just so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> then if you go further down, um, oh, this was kind of great. You have to look zoom in there. There's actually a picnic table right next to the falls in the in this rock formation, which I just thought was fantastic. Yeah, wow. and what I love too is every campsite has a picnic table, which is awesome. Yeah. And they have picnic tables in the water, too. At Havasu Mm -hmm. Falls, they had it. And um, Mooney Falls has them, too. They have (laughs) the picnic picnic table in the water, which if you're there when it's hot, especially in July or August, oh, my God, it has to be be heaven to just be able to sit there. And there's – I also found a lot of um, tree stumps that Mm -hmm. they have placed there, too, so people could – sit or stand and you're really enjoying this like being in the water yeah it's great we had a lot of people too that packed like cheap floaties so that's <laughs> something i would do if i went back to in the in the summer just like a, you know little one you got a walgreens or wherever that's really light but they were just you know chilling out floating for the that's day awesome. and i think so it was cool too um yeah this is just in the morning the day that i was leaving it was cool to see the like mist coming off of the falls as well and I think the next up, so this next one is there's um, about 0.5 miles from from there, from Havasu Falls, is Mooney Falls. So what's fun about this one is you'll see that first sign says, descend at your own risk, mm-hmm. at own risk. And they that cannot <laughs> be more true. It was incredible. I would definitely recommend really good, you know, no flip-flops. You need to bring, mm-hmm. like, water shoes um, definitely for this because as you round the corner to the right there, you're actually going through, and we can kind of roll through the photos now so they can see. Uh, there's, like, a cave you go through. There is, um, so this is part of the cave, and then there's chains into the rocks you'll go down that chute of the cave and then there's chains on the rocks and ladders and you have to work yourself down the ladders and and it's very slippery rock it's well the water the mist is coming uh from the falls hitting the rocks so the rocks are not only wet they're also years of having water hit them are very smooth Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and remember you're on a native american reservation so it's the natives have like carved this out for you to be able to do it but it's not well maintained the ladders are not actually connected to the rock because my friend who was going down in front of me leaned back and the ladder came with him 
Um, so, but he was able to like go forward fast enough. It is very, very scary. Um, you go down, yeah, extremely steep, and it's the only way to go up as well. Mm -hmm. And so you have to play this game with people. It's kind of like a whole group goes down, and then a whole group goes up. Because right at the end there, it gets, you need both hands. I was holding my water, mm -hmm. and I ended up having to toss my water down yeah. because you really need both hands to get down. And, um, yeah, it's it's tricky. Yeah, I wore, I actually wore my, my hiking shoes but had my water shoes with me knowing that mm -hmm. I was going to go into the water once we got down there. But... Yeah, it's I. It's so slippery. It was. Yeah. I don't think I'm. I would do. I want to go back to have a soup high, but I don't think I would do Mooney Falls. That's too much. Yeah, I loved it, but I definitely. I ended up clipping my water on. We had a little, you know, fanny. I recommend taking a fanny pack for mm -hmm. that day, and or something that you can at least put everything in, so you have both of your hands free, because it's just too easy to slip quickly. So, but then this is the enjoyment, because this is our crew, like down inside the falls, and and um, it, yeah, and it was. There's also uh, there's a rope swing. In there that I think we'll show in one of the pictures too. So you oh, can, you I can, didn't see no, that. yeah. So you can swing. I had some video. I think it's posted on the Instagram. So you can That's actually awesome. swim, swing, uh, swing into the water and let go. And yeah, just kind of hang out. Yeah, in Mooney Falls is um, there. It taller. is. You can kind of see. It's, it's it's hard to see in this photo, but it's like oh, right the there tree, in the middle yeah. on the tree, hanging on the tree. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Mooney Falls is taller than Niagara Falls. Mm. Yeah, I think it it is 200 feet high. Yeah, it's it's really incredible. Mooney yeah. Falls, it was beautiful, but yeah, getting down there is hairy, but you can still see it if you don't go down. Mm -hmm. They like kind of right before you start where that sign is, you can still get a good view of it um for those who do not want to risk it going down because um, it is scary <laughs> and there is no other way. Yeah. We hiked so past Mooney Falls is Beaver Falls and we continued hiking trying to get to beaver falls but it was actually getting really late so we didn't finish the whole way there um because it is about mm -hmm. two and a half to three miles past mooney falls mm -hmm. um and we didn't make it all the way but <laughs> while going i was like there has to be another way to get to Mooney Falls. Like, there has to be. That's just the fastest way. And there really isn't. I really looked. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, there, um, we didn't make it to Beaver Falls either. And, I, and if I go back, I really would, would like to do that. Because I was also reading you can, and then if you keep going, then you actually hit um, the Colorado River. Yeah. So next time, if, or if you have more time, I think that would be fun to just spend that another day then really going and exploring that and then and yeah, working you your way back. Yeah, in the morning. Yeah, they said that the the, the trip trail to Beaver Falls was just like stunning along the way, and I think there's some the areas where you see where people are walking through water like along the trails. And stuff. Yeah. Oh, I should have sent you that picture. You so yeah to get to Beaver Falls. There's a, another reason why a lot of people don't do it is you have to do a river crossing, mm. which if you've never done a river crossing is so awesome. It is like <laughs> out of your Oregon Trail fantasies where you're like, I'm fully dressed and I'm going to walk through this river. Um, and so I'm 5'2", and it came up, the river at its highest. Like I tried to kind of like, you see where you have to cross and you can kind of be like, okay, maybe I'll walk over there. Maybe I'll walk to the left a little bit. Um, so wherever I found, thought it was the best way to walk through, um, it came about mid-thigh for me. Okay. And I had a fanny pack on, so mm -hmm. I just had to hold up my fanny pack and um, hold, you know, you just kind of got to hold everything above you. But yeah, it's fine. So you actually have to do a river crossing at least twice. Mm. And the second one is when I was like, it was getting so late and I'm like, oh, uh oh, and you're in the canyon. And I was just, you know, I didn't want to get stuck out there. <laughs> I didn't want to have to hike up back up the Mooney Falls thing in the dark oh yeah so mm -hmm. um we had to turn back we didn't make it all the way there but yeah we had to do at least two river crossings and it's pretty awesome i mean the water for us even though it was about 50 degrees outside the water is 50 to 60 degrees yeah. even in the winter it stays pretty warm um so doing the river crossing wasn't bad and i wore um like lululemon pants so they're like they wick away you know sweat mm -hmm. and water so once I was out of the water, I wasn't, like, dripping wet, even mm -hmm. though I had pants on. They dried pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right.
Um, all right, before we, because we want to run out of time, um, we let's break down. Let's break down gear a little bit for you guys. Mm. Let's talk about some of the gear that you brought. All right, so this is my packing list. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you're gonna want hiking boots and water shoes. Uh, you absolutely want water shoes if you're going because you want to be in the water. Yeah. I mean, were you guys in the water the whole time oh, yeah. because it was warm? Yeah, it was amazing. That's yeah. what I want. I want to go back when it's warm. <laughs> uh, definitely hiking boots, obviously, for your hike in. Um, a sun hat for your hike in as well. Um, I like to wear nylon pants and nylon um, shorts for when I am hiking um, because they, you know, like I said, they wick away sweat and they are also comfortable for me. Uh, a lot of companies now that make hiking pants have started to make hiking tights for women and they have made winter ones and summer ones. Mm. So uh, that is something. So now I don't have to wear like more sports ones. I can wear specific ones for hiking that are a little bit thicker on the butt and the knees and things like that. Um, you definitely have to bring a bathing suit. Yes. Uh, do not forget your bathing suit. Even for me, when it was cold, I still had my bathing suit on because I still wanted to go and take my pictures in the waterfall. Um, I would recommend a cotton shirt for the nighttime to change into um, and uh, a sports bra for the ladies and a regular bra to change into at night as well. Um, I like one to two long sleeve shirts. I brought a fleece shirt as well because um, it was cold when we were going. Um, I also brought sweatpants, a warm hat, underwear. Don't forget your underwear. <laughs> Um, and they make camping underwear. They do. That, mm -hmm. like, s keeps bacteria Dollars. away and stuff like that. So you Dries don't... super fast. Yeah, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. And because you, all the campsites are by water, too. So, like, our clothes got really muddy from hiking mm -hmm. down to Mooney. So we actually yeah. had to clean them in the river and then dry them. Um, and then it, when it comes to, like, your backpack stuff, obviously a backpack that fits you, like we had talked about, um, a tent. My favorite tent is um, North Face makes a really great two-person tent, and it is so easy to put mm -hmm. up. It's the, the things are color-coded, so it's like you know where to put them in. It makes it really easy to set up and put away. Um, a sleeping bag. My sleeping bag uh, was a below zero sleeping bag. So I, even though it was so cold outside, I was comfy as a cucumber mm -hmm. in that thing. Um, a pillow, a small camping pillow that you can blow up. A sleeping pad that you can also blow up. Um, a stove, like we said. Fuel for your stove and matches mm -hmm. or a lighter for your stove. Um, I take bowls and utensils. I like to use um, coffee mugs that are like camping coffee mugs, mm -hmm. even as my bowl. So I bring two, I bring one to drink out of and one to put my food in. Um, and I just bring plastic utensils. My boyfriend has camping utensils, but mm. I just bring like plastic ones, it's fine. <laughs> um, two water bottles per person, sunscreen. I like face wipes mm -hmm. for to like wipe my face, wipe my hands consistently. Um, and batteries and a headlamp. You want a headlamp at For night sure. because there is no campfire and it gets so mm -hmm. dark. Um, I also have a really cool lantern that is um, the sun charges it and it actually like folds yes. up. And so it's nice because then it's like no space and you can open it up and it gives you guys some light. Some people on our team had those as well. And I was they're like, oh, awesome. they're, yeah, I recommend. Um, sunglasses, a chair. They make camping chairs that are really light and it was really nice to have when we hiked to the falls and then you can kind of like sit and relax and like check out the falls and you have like a nice chair to sit in um, a day pack so whether it's mm -hmm. a fanny pack or like a small string backpack that way you can like bring your sandals if you want to wear your hiking shoes um, you can bring snacks water so extra sunscreen camera gear things like that mm -hmm. um, I bring a little towel. I didn't bring a big towel, but I brought a like one of those kind of um, terry cloth, like quick drying ones, and it was small. And so I brought that. Um, and then yeah, and then my food. I don't. Th mm -hmm. I think that's all I brought. 
Um, I did end up buying chips from the store in the village because I was craving salt. Yeah. And I wanted like Doritos. <laughs> it's amazing how good because I bought, you know, they had the big pickles in the jar mm -hmm. there too. It was like the best pickle of my life. It was like so, because like, we did that too. I was like, you do crave that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I won't repeat because much of my stuff was all the same. I will just say a little bit different in the summer. Some things you might not need is I didn't have a tent. So a lot of us mm. just slept. Like two people in our group had them. A lot of us didn't. And we just slept on our sleeping bag. And you, of course, don't need, we needed a, uh, just a very light sleeping bag. I thought it actually might get cooler at night than it did. So I had had, like, you know, long pants to sleep in in my sleeping bag. And it was definitely did, I could have done shorts and just the tiny, you know, the wow. lighter sleeping bag. And then So you didn't up. even do a hammock? No hammock. Huh? I just did a sleeping pad on the ground and my, uh, and the, oh my gosh, the look bag. at you. But yeah, we had one hammock in our group. Um, but yeah. I was, Where I was, did you change then? Eh, I'm sure I exposed you know myself some people because I, <laughs> I always kind of didn't care. I always change in the tent we kind of just went behind the tent and you know yeah at that point I just didn't really yeah you're just like, tell everybody to turn around yeah <laughs> That's so funny. it's quickly how you just quickly lose you know inhibitions it's like yeah okay um I did also bring you said head that I had marked that um I, I brought, uh, for my iPhone, I like the life-proof case so that I could actually take my phone down to all these falls, too, and not have to worry about, um, you know, dropping it in, you know, yeah. in the water or anything like that. So that was GoPros something that I would are add. great Goal, for Goal, that. Goal, yeah, yeah, I didn't have the camera gear. that Because I, thankfully, didn't have to bring camera gear, but the guys I was with brought tons of camera gear. And GoPros or, yeah, something where you can get it wet because you want to be in the water. You yeah. want to get those waterfall pictures. And it's really wet. It's mm -hmm. hard to tell, but a lot of water is coming off of it. And yeah, I was too scared to like take my phone down, but you want those yeah. pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's what it's about. Yeah, so just make some, <laughs> sure someone in your group is the one like, look doing that because it is fun to look back. And, and it also helps you when you get back to like, re, you know, retrace the trail. Like years from like, oh yeah, so I try to keep them all in order like so I remember how it like, That's went good. down and yeah. stuff too. Um, yeah. And we should say, too, the bathrooms there at the campsite are not terrible. No. They're all compostable bathrooms, and they really take care of them. Yes. And, and that's awesome. And then right at the start of the campsite is a fry bread hut, and I recommend stopping <sighs> there. Did there. No, no, we tried, and it was closed because they also had, like, a, like tacos uh. and stuff, too, and we, we didn't get – it was closed, and we went back up there. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. So if it is open, I mean, it's – they open and close whenever they want because <laughs> they're running it. But I would recommend it was amazing fry bread. And it feels like you're eating, like, something authentic and they're making it for you. And, um, yeah, it was. and I'm a vegetarian, and so they made vegetarian ones, and it was mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. And before we, like, wrap up, so any, like, last-minute thoughts or just, just like, uh, overall experience? or I would say if you're thinking about doing it, do it. You know, there you can. There are ways to helicopter in. Uh, you have to check the dates for that. But if you, you know, if you feel like, if you can walk for ten miles or twelve miles, you can do it. You know, and it is really worth it. And it's so beautiful. And both of us want to go back, yeah. which is a testament yeah. to it. Um, and it's hard, but it's it's an accomplishable hard, and it's it's just great. It's so beautiful. And yeah, I I want to go back so. Um, I would definitely recommend going and um, just plan your trip and be aware you are going to a Native American reservation. You have to pack out your trash. Mm -hmm. um, so just really be aware of like all those small, minute things that um, – don't necessarily come with a normal campsite. Mm -hmm. I agree, and, and just a, a respect, you know, what you're getting the chance to do. You know, this is sacred ground for the tribe, and when you see it, you completely understand why, because you just can't help but feeling the majestic, it's just, it's just an overwhelming feeling when you see it. It's like, the, the it's amazing that the still these kind of things exist. I think we all get caught up in the day to day, and I know I do. Like being connected to the phone, being in traffic, being in, you know annoyed by the L.A. city, you know, and it, it just it was so good to just shut that all down and just be in awe of of that that place and just have a time when you're just all you could do is just just appreciate. And I just think it gives you an overall sense of gratitude for your life, for getting to have that experience, for the people that you're there with, and it just is a great like if you. You're just needing to get out and to like I think reset your life or if you're going through something or anything to me it's just a magical place to like you know have your have your thoughts on that trail have your thoughts while you're sleeping under the beautiful stars the turquoise water yeah you know? that's awesome yeah and it's 
it's cool because when you're there, there are no cars. Mm -hmm. The natives get around on horseback. Mm -hmm. You are really in a different different place and it feels so different mm -hmm. and yeah there's like a special energy that's there and yeah it's it's just really cool and worth it and everyone that's there is there to experience nature mm -hmm. and to experience this natural phenomenon and yeah it's and thankfully the Havasupai people have preserved it and have welcomed us in yes. to come there so it's it's really cool and you know we should take advantage and I, I felt fine paying because I'm like, thank you for having me as me a visitor. Too. Like, please keep preserving it and keep, you know, keep us coming because I think it's, you know, as you go, you learn about it. And as you learn, you know, you're now aware. And I think they were fighting like a lead mining thing or something. Yes. And I, I took the postcard and I sent it me in for that. Me too. Right away. Yeah. That, I agree. You feel like whatever you can do to save, like something like, you know. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, and you know there there were people of all ages so you're you're not too old you're not too young you're not too whatever you might limitations you might be putting on yourself there is a way like you said to figure out how to get it done if, if you don't feel comfortable hiking your pack down put that on the mule or hiking it up or you know or if you there's just ways I saw all ages you know people with walking stick up and just and everybody's so nice and you know enjoying so just yeah just don't make excuses for yourself if you want to go I say find a way to make it happen and yeah go. and we're so lucky to live in America where we have national parks and we have these places that have been preserved and uh, we should take advantage of them because you know not everywhere has these places mm -hmm. and we need to preserve them and so more people need to go and see them and see how special they are yeah uh, agree. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing thank your you experience. Me. If you guys have any questions, you know, tweet at either one of us because, like, like you said, she's got the experience of going in there when it's colder. Mm -hmm. I got it when it was warmer. One stupid thing we did was we left to come out at 9.30 in the morning, so we were hiking. That final mile and a half stretch is a little treacherous, and we did that in the high heat. So don't do that. Just be aware <laughs> of when you hike in and out of the canyon, and you'll be great and have an amazing experience. So thank you guys so much. I look forward to uh, seeing you on the next Next show. Bye bye. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.